The DPRK has reactivated a telephone hotline with the South following the Winter Olympics offer by Seoul. What will be achieved from the high-level dialogue through this hotline? The U.S. will not participate in any talks between the DPRK and ROK unless Pyongyang stops its nuclear weapons plan. So North Korea can talk with anyone they want, but the U.S. is not going to recognize it or acknowledge it until they agree to ban the nuclear weapons that they have. But in his New Year's speech, Kim Jong-un said the DPRK will push the nuclear program with the maximum speed in defiance of UN resolutions. So, how can tensions be further reduced to maintain peace and stability? The latest sanctions approved by the UN seek to tighten oil supplies to the DPRK. The DPRK's foreign ministry issued a statement saying that the resolution was an act of war. What effect are sanctions having on the DPRK? South Korean President Moon Jae-in said that South Korea should play a leading role in the nuclear issue. But will that be decisive? Who holds the key to the Korean nuclear dilemma? On Wednesday, the DPRK reopened the hotline to South Korea almost two years after it was disabled. The hotline will be used for the two countries to discuss the practical issues around sending a DPRK delegation to the Winter Olympic Games in South Korea's Pyeongchang. Why has the DPRK decided to shift its relations with the South now? What influence will the United States have on its ROK ally? And how might the future of the nuclear issue be affected by the new situation? To discuss the latest developments on the Korean Peninsula, today I'm happy to be joined in the studio by Zhao Tong, fellow at the Carnegie Tsinghua Center for Global Policy, and Harvey Zordin, research fellow with the Center for China and Globalization, or CCG. That's our topic. This is Dialogue. I'm Yang Rei. Welcome to Dialogue, gentlemen. What do you think is the major driving force behind the dramatic decision of uh, Mr. Kim Jong-un to send a DPRK delegation to Pyeongchang venue for the Winter Olympics in South Korea? Well, I think uh, North Korea is now in a slightly different position than a few months ago because after the most recent Hwasong 15 intercontinental ballistic missile test, North Korea might believe it has already obtained a credible strategic deterrent and therefore it can afford not conducting additional ICBM tests. In other words, it can exercise some self-restraint. But the problem is the United States is not responding to the signal of self-restraint from North Korea. So North Korea has to talk to South Korea, who has been begging for North Korea to start negotiations. What do you think of the immediate response from President Donald Trump? who said, I have a button much bigger and powerful than yours. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was vintage Trump, and it doesn't help the situation very much. I, I personally think that uh, the North Koreans must be thinking about Trump and what he might do. Senator Lindsey Graham said that there's a 30% chance of the U.S. going to war with North Korea rising to 70 percent um, if there's another nuclear test. So I think the North Koreans may be concerned. Also, if I were Trump, by the way, um, I would say that they're doing this now because it's under pressure, their back's against the wall. Uh, they have these ghost ships that have been washing up um, on the shores of Japan with dead North Korean fishermen on them, usually dead. and. Uh, the speculation is that uh, the North is, has to go much further afield to fish to provide resources, food for their people. So Trump would say that the sanctions are working. What do you think of the impact of the sanctions? Well, clearly the sanctions are having a real impact on North Korea. In the New Year address... Of course, with so the powerful help from Russia and China in particular. Yeah, and Kim Jong-un himself acknowledged that in his New Year's address. Uh, he said the country will face a challenging time, and he asked his people uh, to strive for more economic success, and he ordered some reform of the important economic sectors. So it's apparent that he knows his time is counted, and he has to make sure his economy can survive and sustain, and therefore he has a stronger incentive to reach out to the United States and South Korea at this, at this moment. His time is accounted, but uh, some 
observers in the West uh, might go as far as to say his days are numbered. Do you agree? I think not. I think that... Uh, in other words, do you believe uh, the U.S. government seeks to have a regime change? And do you think there's any feasibility for the United States to get the job done? Do I think it's the dream of the United States to have regime change? Yes. Do I think that it's a, any practical chance of that happening? No. When you look at the Koreas, both Koreas have the same vision. They want a united Korea, but each side sees themselves as the leader. I don't see the Americans stepping in at this point and causing re regime change. I don't think any sanctions are going to do that. And I don't think the war is an answer either, because the consequences go much beyond regime change there. It doesn't come as a surprise, does it, when two Korean delegations walked into the stadium of the Olympic Games opening ceremony hand in hand. What do you think of uh, the uh, prospects of a uh, having kind of a reconciliation between the two careers, using the Olympic Games as a very good opportunity? I think it looks at this moment uh, very likely that North Korea will send a delegation to the Winter Games. Whether the North Korean athletes will parade together with their South Korean counterparts at either the opening or closing ceremony is a big question. Um, I think both Koreas recognize this is a golden opportunity uh, because North Korea on the one hand has already achieved the basic technical needs in terms of their nuclear development so they can afford not conducting more provocations in the near term future and also the Winter Olympics gives a good opportunity for the United States and South Korea to do something to either scale down or postpone their joint military exercises without appearing uh, weak on North Korea without losing face. So uh, both Koreas want to make the most out of this opportunity. That's a very interesting issue, Harvey. Do you think it's the DPRK which is the first to blink in the standoff between the US, South Koreans and Japanese on the one side and across the aisle? Uh, I don't think China is behind the DPRK, behind the issue of the nuclear proliferation, but uh, what do you think of uh, this move by Mr. Kim Jong-un to seek a thaw in the frosty relationship across the demilitarized zone? I think as we look back uh, through the last year and before that Kim Jong-un and his regime are one of the biggest winners in international relations uh, on the world uh, sphere and I think that he's been very uh, wise and wily and uh, has taken advantage of, uh, of the facts as they are. He doesn't have much resources except for the nukes, they're a big resource, but doesn't have uh, much else. So I think they've done a lot with what, uh, with what they have and I think uh, they're using it. I think he feels that this is the best time to either cut a deal or to split the U.S. off from South Korea and in fact split uh, various allies off from each other. It's at a time when the nukes seem to be uh, almost operationalized so he has a lot of bargaining power. They're not fully operational so maybe he feels the other side's going to cut a deal. And like you said before, the South Koreans have been begging for a conversation with North Korea. Now they're going to get it. Well, both of you used the word of a bagging, which sounds pretty humiliating for the South Koreans. Do you think uh, uh, people in Seoul, I mean, President Moon Jae-in, are likely to repeat the sunshine policy and uh, seek genuine uh, rapprochement? I think that's his agenda. Uh, he genuinely believes oh, that... Oh, you believe he has the ambition of winning Nobel Peace Prize, uh, like Obama? <laughs> I think he wouldn't <laughs> mind. <laughs> <laughs> he certainly wouldn't mind, but I think he genuinely believes in sanction policy, believes in uh, dialogue and, and engagement with North Korea. The only dragging factor for President Moon Jae-in is his American ally, uh, who is not on the same page as uh, President Moon Jae-in himself. 
uh, the U.S. position is still North Korea has to make substantive progress on denuclearization before any talk can start. Um, but the South Korean position is we can talk without preconditions. So the internal division between Seoul and Washington is really preventing a major diplomatic breakthrough at this moment. Uh, do you think uh, uh, Pyongyang is likely to set preconditions for resuming talks in the truce village of uh, uh, Panmunjom, uh, the site where the ceasefire was signed, the truce was signed in the year 1953 with the end of the Korean War? What will be the top issues uh, on the agenda? Well, obviously the first would be just the mechanics of how do you pull this uh, Olympic participation off so late in the game. It requires some uh, extraordinary reorganization and so on. And it depends how much each side wants it. But I would suspect that one of the conversations will be about uh, the reunification, uh, not reunification of the countries, but reuniting or temporary reuniting of, uh, of families. This would certainly be uh, an issue that's going to be discussed, and, and there may be others as well. And do you think family reunions across the DMZ has always been used as a tool yeah. by the regime in the DPRK to send a positive uh, trial balloon and uh, use that as a prelude to the rapprochement. Do you think this is a kind of a, I wouldn't call it a conspiracy, but it's deliberately used as a, a tool? Yes, I, I think that's exactly right. Uh, if we read the statement by the North Korean Minister of uh, United Front released on Wednesday, he said very clearly that this dialogue at uh, uh, Panmunjom uh, with South Korea could be a first step in improving bilateral relations, meaning uh, this could open up an opportunity to many other possibilities. Uh, they can certainly, after talking about North Korean participation in the Winter Games, also broaden the discussion to cover how to resume the separated families uh, to meet with each other, how to resume the cutoff military uh, hotline between the two Koreas. At this moment, the risk of military conflict is real and growing. Uh, the risk of misunderstanding is very serious. So resuming military uh, hotline is, very, is also very helpful. They can also discuss whether they can, whether South Korea can provide more humanitarian aid, or uh, the, the prospect for resuming some economic engagement. Uh, recently, North Korea internally has uh, began to criticize the decision of uh, previous South Korean President Park Geun-hye in unilaterally closing down the Kaesong Industrial Park. So it, it's very obvious that North Korea wants to re uh, reopen. Uh, this industrial park and hopefully also resume, resuming other economic relations with South Korea. And, and by doing those things, they really further drive a wedge between U.S. and South Korea uh, because they would uh, undercut the sanctions significantly if they started providing that kind of aid. And I think the U.S.'s big worry is they're going to be cut out of the process. Uh, it may not be so much the specifics, but that they don't have a seat at the table, and they're worried what the two Koreas might uh, do to come to some agreement uh, with each other. But I'm afraid uh, the uh, strained relationship does not just exist between Washington and Pyongyang. What we are talking about by the end of the day is a UN security resolution. That resolution should not be easily violated, be it a South Korea or a third party. So, do you think? Uh, South Korea has got to comply with uh, the resolution uh, despite the current dynamics uh, in improving the relationship. Question number two, Mr. Zhao Zhong and Harvey. Do you believe uh, Pyeongchang Winter Olympic Games would just be a case of expediency? Uh, following this event, winter would continue. Uh, well, uh, for the first question, uh, I think North Korea, uh, I'm sorry, South Korea is facing some dilemmas, of course, uh, with the restrictions from the UN Security Council resolutions. The wiggle room for South Korea in resuming economic relations with North Korea is very small. Uh, South Korea couldn't uh, reopen the Kaesong Industrial Park, for example, without violating the resolutions. 
Um, so uh, yes, the, it will not be hey, done. Excuse me, I didn't study the UN Security Resolution very carefully. I didn't follow the details of the Security Resolution. If, if any of you could brief me about the details, does the solution, I mean resolution, have any uh, uh, preconditions? For example, humanitarian assistance would be an exception yep. to uh, help the poor, the weak, the old in North Korea. Yes, uh, based on my limited understanding of the resolutions, humanitarian aid is allowed. However, uh, similarly, uh, we think of, uh, for example, the oil for food uh, event that uh, former chief of the UN, Kofi Annan, engineered, but he came under fire for the alleged uh, corruption scandal that his son was involved with. Uh, do you think uh, uh, similar things are likely to happen? Well, I don't think the oil for food approach will work because resolutions explicitly prohibited any exportation of North Korean mineral resources, including coal and iron, uh, and uh, industrial products and agricultural products. So North Korea cannot export all the major items to get revenue. So that's prohibited. And also, it's explicitly prohibited uh, to, uh, for any uh, foreign country to uh, establish joint, uh, joint ventures with uh, joint uh, enterprises with North Korea. In other words, that really restricts how the Kaiso Industrial Park can, can operate. And also, uh, financial institutes, uh, banks, are prohibited from uh, helping uh, North Koreans uh, in making dollar transactions. I, I mean, I do follow Western media reports about the influence, if any, that China could exert on our North Korean uh, neighbor. For example, uh, Western media reports accuse China of uh, providing hundreds of North Koreans uh, with the shelter and the work opportunities in the mainland, in the provinces that uh, share border with the DPRK. If this was to be true, uh, do you think, uh, you know, China should do more. China says, uh, uh, well, you need to take into consideration the humanitarian factors. Uh, you cannot uh, corner the DPRK. You cannot go, uh, go too far and do too much. What do you think of the Chinese concerns, Harvey? I think the Chinese have to make a good faith effort to uh, enforce the UN uh, sanctions and resolutions. And uh, by not doing uh, their part, on this, I think they put themselves in a position of for for valid criticism. So I hope that they would enforce these things more. That is a very diplomatic uh, uh, and mild uh, criticism. Uh, <laughs> I'm always the diplomatic. China. Uh, <laughs> yes, China does come under fire and a huge pressure from the United States across the Pacific Ocean. You are watching dialogue with Zhao Tong and Harvey Zodin. We are discussing whether the uh, upcoming Pyeongchang Winter Olympics in South Korea would be a game changer in introducing rapprochement between the two Koreas. We'll be back in a short while. Stay with us, please. Welcome back. We are not only just talking about uh, whether the, uh, the Kaichung Industrial Park will be reopened between the two Koreas. It's also a matter of whether the military drills jointly conducted between South Korea and the United States uh, serve to block any maritime trade and commerce that uh, the DPRK holds so dear. Now tell us, if you can, what is going on in the nearby waters uh, uh, of the Korean Peninsula. My understanding, I wonder if it's precise and to the point, is that hosting such joint military drills would actually serve to block uh, the, uh, the, the, the maritime trade to such a degree where people immediately think of uh, why the, s the Pacific War was uh, triggered. Mm -hmm. The Japanese uh, uh, maritime oil supply was cut off by the uh, U.S. military, the Navy, and they decided to launch a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor. So the issue of desperation is like a haunting specter. What do you think of a repeat of such a scenario? 
I think you are exactly right. I, don't, I think that's why China doesn't want to repeat the uh, history of the Second World War and completely cut off the oil uh, export to North Korea. And therefore, the recent UN resolution only requires a reduction of export of refined oil products to North Korea. Well, the crude oil products are still allowed, even though there is a limit on the amount. Uh, regarding the military exercises, exercises and maritime interception of North Korean ships, um, I think the, after the most recent UN resolution, um, the resolution requires a country to uh, forcibly inspect and even seize uh, suspected North Korean ships uh, within its territorial water. But Pyongyang says it amounts to a declaration of a war. Right. Has ever of such moves uh, taken place? Um, yes, indeed. Uh, most recently, South Korea already seized two uh, suspicious ships when they were visiting a South Korean port. And the cases are still under investigation. But the Americans actually want more. They want the UN to authorize all member countries to be uh, to uh, forcibly intercept all suspicious ships even on international water. Mm -hmm. So China and Russia have resisted those uh, proposals so that prevents uh, U.S. to uh, launch a military uh, uh, seizure of North Korean ship and, and possibly triggering a real military conflict in the near term future. As a confidence building measure, um, the joint exercises between South Korea and U.S. Uh, are time limited, so the, these are not going on for months and months, but uh, as a matter of weeks. And uh, there have been at least uh, three or four instances where they were suspended during the sunshine period. So I think this is a, a legitimate topic for discussion and something that could be easily offered up as confidence building without degrading the military capability of either side. In fact, the Chinese Foreign Ministry has called for suspension for suspension, uh, namely uh, the, the United States and South Korea suspend their military drills, uh, the DPRK suspends its uh, missile launches and uh, nuclear tests. Uh, do you think uh, the Chinese appeal is likely to pay off <laughs> since uh, uh, as a part of the confidence building measure to promote uh, mutual trust? The well, problem trust is a luxury word for the two sides. Yeah, and trust is the operative word here because those two activities are not uh, symmetrical. It's uh, easy to see that uh, the U.S. is not going to conduct or is not conducting military exercises with the South Koreans, but it's much more difficult to determine if the North Koreans are not secretly going ahead with nuclear research or other nuclear activities. So I think the devil's in the details. It's possible but unlikely. By the time the 19th National Congress of the CPC Central Committee opened. A message of congratulations uh, was indeed sent from Pyongyang. However, when Beijing sent its special envoy, in fact, a special envoy of President Xi Jinping to Pyongyang, he was not received by Kim Jong un. Neither did we see any tea or coffee served on the negotiating table. That delivered a pretty frosty signal about how difficult the bilateral relationship had been between these two alleged allies. By saying allies, I mean, we did sign a, a mutual assistance uh, uh, friendship uh, treaty with Pyongyang in the 1960s. Uh, some of the articles uh, did have some ambiguity as to whether China still uh, has the obligation and commitment to come to the defense of uh, uh, DPRK once it comes under fire from whatever enemy, potentially. So what do you think of uh, the uh, adversity that China faces? Do you think uh, our influence has been exhausted mm -hmm. and uh, the diplomatic maneuvers, if any, between the two countries have come to a uh, standstill or ground to a halt? Yeah, mm -hmm. I, th I think it's uh, certainly true that uh, Chinese leverage over North Korea's nuclear policy is limited and even uh, diminishing. Uh, the bilateral high-level exchange is uh, at a very low level. Um, but I would caution against saying that uh, China has no influence in North Korea. 
Um, and also I want to push back a little bit on your uh, description of the uh, Chinese meeting with their North Korean counterparts when there was no flour, no tea served. Because if we look at the pictures of North Korean delegations meeting with Cuban visitors, for example, the setting was exactly the same. It looks like more like a North Korean tradition. But well, I'm, I'm not sorry. Sorry. Well, China. well uh, yeah, then I can understand the low budget and right. the style of simplicity for the North Korean government. Uh, I mean, and also another, <laughs> another, <laughs> yeah, another <laughs> evidence is uh, recently actually China hosted a meeting uh, for both North Korean and South Korean officials to meet in a southern city in China. And at that meeting, they discussed the possibility of North Korea sending a delegation to the Winter Games. And possibly that meeting led to the most recent progress we saw between the North and South. So China is still playing some brokering role, and looks like China is still trusted by both Koreas. But I, I think there's a more ominous component to this. And that is, well, Chairman Mao said that uh, political power comes through the barrel of the end of the barrel of a gun. The North Koreans' power comes through the end of a intercontinental ballistic missile uh, tipped with a nuclear weapon. So I think they've had a chance now to get instant confidence and to act with even more swagger, and that worries me for both the present and the future. We have a Chinese saying, "不打不相识 Without a fight, you won't be able to come to understand each other. Having said this, uh, let's uh, come back to examine implications of the sports events. Now, back in the early 1970s, the ping pong diplomacy helped open the door between the United States and China. This time around, it's the ping pong winter Olympics in Seoul. What about the uh, Olympic Games, the summer one, in Japan? Do you think uh, that country, which is lurking behind the bamboo curtain, will be the second chapter, if not uh, yet a bigger game changer in introducing a thaw uh, to improve the security scenario in Northeast Asia? Well, I, I think that's too far away. <laughs> uh, the situation over the Korean Peninsula changes every day. Oh, uh, it's the other way around. The Prime Minister Shinzo Abe wants to use the uh, missile test as a threat to arouse the approval rating so that his uh, power base might be strengthened back at home for the RDP to uh, have more of the campaign success. I think there is certainly um, a, tr a truth in the statement that uh, Japan wants to make use of, wants to take advantage of the North Korean crisis in uh, trying to uh, become a more normal state with a normal military. Uh, recently, Japan decided to uh, import some uh, cruise missiles uh, with ranges further than 1,000 kilometers for its aircrafts. Um, so uh, that's, Koreans, uh, that's Japan's long-term ambition uh, to become a normal military power and uh, North Korea's nuclear crisis provides a perfect excuse uh, for Japan to do so. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Uh, that's our dialogue on whether the Ping Tang Winter Olympics in South Korea will be an opportunity for the strained relationship across the demilitarized zone to be improved. We'll wait to see whether more positive signals will be coming from the Oval Office of the White House. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Until then, goodbye.